just, just backing up what we did in class. We knew that this limit is zero. And then I asked you, um, in this case, going back to the symbols, a n was 1 over n, a was 0. And then I gave you epsilon. So I said, OK, what if epsilon's 0.9? What would my capital N be? And then you found your capital N. Then if, what if my epsilon was 0 0.01? What might my capital N be? So I think everybody got this in class. I, I kind of lost you getting it, what you're looking for. You're always looking for that capital N. In proof writing, to prove something actually converges, you're supposed to do the same thing, except instead of a teacher giving you 0 0.01 or 0 0.9 or all these numbers, you have a man with a bag of epsilons, and they say, here's an epsilon, and they fly it to you. And it's not a numerical value. It's an arbitrary epsilon that came from the bag. And you're supposed to find that capital N for that arbitrary epsilon, which you don't know exactly what number it is. Does that make sense? So what if I gave you an arbitrary epsilon? I say, I've got an epsilon in this bag over here. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Can you tell me what the capital N is going to be? That's what's going on. So epsilon is given from the bag of epsilons. That's why we say in the proofs, you know, I was always confused. Uh, I was an imitator, so I imitated my professors. And they'd write, let epsilon greater than zero be given. I had no idea why they were doing this. But this is what they were doing. They're saying, it's... That's a bag of epsilons back here. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm about to pull it out, this epsilon, and you're not going to know what it is. Can you give me the n anyways? That's what they're looking for. So you go backwards. So this is the scratch work. This was the big secret that no one told me, that you go backwards. I'm going to show you the forwards proof in a second. You start with what you want, and you do some algebra, high school algebra. I want a n minus a to be less than epsilon at some cut point. That's my end game. And then I just do the math and solve for the little n. This is the only problem with PowerPoints. I, I, I like to talk fast. I like to move fast. So I'm just going to watch Stan and make sure that I don't go past his pencil. <laughs> All right. The absolute value of 1 over n, since all the n's are bigger than 1 in a sequence, are always positive. So I can take off those absolute value. My calculus teacher told me, you really learn algebra in calculus. You really learn inequalities and absolute value in real analysis. That's where you really start to understand. That's always positive, so I can drop it off. And then I can solve for little n. Reciprocating is a new verb. It means turn both sides upside down. It changes the inequality from going that way to the other way. Why does that happen? If you're in numerical analysis, you're probably doing some of these inequality things in class. But it happens like if you think about 2 and 3, 2 is less than 3. But when you take the reciprocal of both sides, 1 half is bigger than 1 third. So it turns the, it turns the Pac-Man mouth the other way. So that's telling me whenever that little n is bigger than 1 over epsilon. So the, the man grabbed the epsilon. Here it is out of the bag. He's not going to show it to you. And it tells me, I don't care what epsilon you have. As long as that little n is bigger than your 1 over epsilon, I'm going to be good. That's what this is telling you. So I just set my capital N to be that, that cut point. That's how you find the threshold. And if you go back and look at what you did for um, that table, this is that algebraic formula that gives you that threshold. I was almost doing it on the board yesterday. That's when I thought, OK, we should actually do these as PowerPoints again, because it was neater. It was not chaotic. This kind of makes it neat. That's a scratch work. In typical real analysis classes, you don't see the scratch work. The professor just comes in and shows you the proofs. I'm going to show you the proof. 
And just imagine you didn't see this. All right. This is the proof. This is what you get shown. This is what's in a textbook. If you go back to Stuart, Stuart has these proofs in it. Does anybody have their Stuart book anymore? You can go back and look in that Stuart book. You'll see these proofs in there. They have to be, that's why this book is gigantic. Let epsilon greater than zero be given. That's the man with the bag of epsilons and he's not showing it. That's that part. That's what that means. Set capital N equal to one over epsilon. Now imagine you're a student and seeing this. Like, why did he do that? Why did she do that? Then, if little n is bigger than that capital N, we have, I just go through the inequalities. If the bottom of a fraction gets smaller, the whole thing gets bigger. Which was my desired piece. So for all little n bigger than that threshold, capital N, I've shown that the absolute value of an minus a is strictly less than epsilon, which is the definition of what it means to converge. <laughs> but just quick recap. Forward proof. I set my n out of the blue. Epsilon was given. I set the n equal to 1 over epsilon. Then I start with 1 over n minus 0 in absolute value. That's the same thing as 1 over n. By absolute value, the 1 over n's are positive. If I take this denominator and make it smaller, the whole fraction gets bigger. n is the bottom is smaller than little n, so I can do this. But n is 1 over epsilon because I set it that way which is really epsilon. For more complicated, like I'm gonna show you more complicated ones. Um, just imagine seeing this as a student and just only seeing this, you only see this. I thought my professor was a genius. I was like, how did, how did he know that capital N was this? Well, he had a piece of scratch paper and he did the work beforehand. Okay, any questions? What is, what is big N again? Big N is uh, in the definition. So I had the definition on the board yesterday, or Wednesday. Um, it's a definition of convergence. For every mm -hmm. epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N in the natural numbers, such that if a n minus a n absolute value is less than epsilon, for all, it has to, such that um, for all little n bigger than capital N, the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon. That's what we were solving for. That's what you were solving for, right. The only difference here is I'm not giving you the exact value of that epsilon. It's like I'm hiding that from you and saying, I've got an epsilon. You say, wait, 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 I've got an n for you. So we just know it's greater than zero because then it's... Because um, in the sequence definition, n starts at one. So if you list them out in the sequence, one, one half, one third, they're all bigger than zero. That's why. Any other questions? <laughs>